what if we start out like this? <laughs> <laughs> Just make myself look really short. <laughs> Do the whole one eye to the side. <laughs> and when people see me at Blade Show, they're like, whoa, you're, you're tall. <laughs> you look smaller on camera. <laughs> Yeah, you know how they say the camera adds 15 pounds? It actually takes away 6 inches of height, though. Uh, <clears throat> Only for gingers. Yeah. Oh, we're recording right now. <laughs> uh, oh, you're too funny. Oh, hey guys. Hey. So if, you're, uh, if you've been following our channel for a long time, you might notice something a little different in the shop. We got new mugs. And new sweaters. Um, but the big piece of news is we bought a new machine. Ta da! Ta da! This is obviously a Tormach PCNC milling machine, the 1100 version, the big one. Um, I got it pretty much fully decked out because I have a lot of work out of me. We do. And. Um, so I got everything except for the automatic tool changer, which I'll buy at some point when I make a lot of money. Um, but yeah, and um, Tormac has sponsored our videos. So they sent us some sweet swag and coffee mugs and a huge banner to go on the wall behind the machine and like 30 stickers and all kinds of great stuff. Um, so we've had it for about a week now. It took us a while to get it set up and installed and all that. And we've got uh, videos coming up of that. Um, I wanted to get this said first and then I'll upload those probably tomorrow. Um, but I do have to say I apologize for not posting knife making videos for a month now. I'm literally four weeks behind. Um, we've been super busy setting up the machine, getting it ready, getting it ordered, um, filling previous orders and just getting ready for blade show which is in one month. And um, crazy busy. But, Knife Making Tuesdays are back on track, and uh, how would you tell us some of the stuff we've been up to? Well, <clears throat> first thing is, this is our old fixture plate for the Norseman blade. And handles. See? And handles. It's uh, not very thick at all. This is the new fixture. I think uh, three quarter inch thick, and it'll get bolted down to a stainless steel. Regular steel. A regular steel fixture plate on the bottom with uh, some dowel pins to line everything up every time. And that way we'll have what's called a pallet system. So it's very easy to just switch out in between different handles, blades, whatever we're making. And... Yeah, so I mean the size difference between old and new, from the old machine to the new machine, you know, here's, hold one of these, here's a handle. You can start to see how many we can fit on this machine. It's a lot. I believe I can fit 18 handles on one fixture, on one pallet, uh, whereas before I was doing one pair at a time. Um, for some of the uh, aluminum handles, I could do, barely do three pair at a time, but um, let me take that one. Um, but yeah, this uh, 18 by 10 inch piece lets me take up every available square inch of that machine and set up a fixture to do as many things as possible in, in a single um, program cycle. Uh, just to be efficient. Because my goal my goal with the Norseman, or I should say our goal with the Norseman, is to basically make it a mid-tech knife right from the start. Uh, we want to make lots of them, not hundreds and thousands, but certainly, well, hundreds over eventually. And, Enough uh, to keep you guys happy. Yeah, keep you guys fulfilled and have cool knives in your pocket. Um, so, but we're going to also take, you know, custom... Uh, tweaks and you know if you want an inlay if you want anodized this is bronze if you want a different color whatever um, so we're gonna keep it open to that so it's still got the custom feel to it as opposed to just being like like a production knife that's this is what it is no options you know 
So that's that. Um, along with the cost of the machine, I've been spending a crazy amount of money on materials. And uh, yesterday we went to Brian Ty's shop and we got, what did we get? Um, like $700 worth of RWL 34. Yep. So that should do about 40 blades. And, um, and then we went to intricut yeah. water jetting and uh, we dropped out all those off to get them water jet cut for us. So then we just put them on the fixture and it cuts our work in a little, you know, it just saves time. We have four weeks until blade show and a crazy amount of work to do between now and then. So having the profiles water jet cut and having uh, pin holes on the profile of the knife lets us just drop it right on the fixture, bolt it down and go, as opposed to dealing with these long pieces of blade steel and having to chop them up, drill holes. It just saves a lot of time. Um, adds a lot of it cost too. I think we're spending like $1,600 at the water jet place by itself. But that'll do a lot of handles and knives and blades and everything. Um, what else? I wrote it all down because there's a lot. I uh, just dropped a lot of money at Alpha Knife Supply. I highly recommend the Alpha Knife Supply. Um, I got some stabilized hardwood. Or, I don't know if it's hardwood. Anyway, stabilized wood for inlays and stuff. I want to play with that. Uh, I got a small piece of Timascus, which is crazy expensive stuff. But small piece should do two inlays. Uh, one's for me. One's for somebody at Blade Show. Um... I got their awesome uh, 3 16 pivots, ball bearings, uh, just bought a whole bunch of end mills for the machine and for this run of Norsemen. A um, bunch of screws from knifekits.com, 440s. Um, Eric got a new toy. Wicked Edge Knife Sharpener. You've been playing with it all day, hey? Yeah, it's uh, wicked awesome. Nice. Yeah, I think someday I'll get him to do a video of, of the Wicked Edge and uh, just his thoughts. I mean, I haven't even hardly touched it, but he'll be the monkey that gets to play with that. <laughs> Speaking of which, sharpen this one. Will do. Um, along with the machine, I got the garage rewired. Uh, I don't think you can see. Anyway, in the corner is a huge uh, breaker panel. 60 amp service, yeah to the garage with a whole bunch of outlets and I've been meaning to do that for a long, long time. Um, is the titanium still in the car? It is. Okay. I have failed. Yeah. <laughs> we'll show that in a minute because um, I just got a lot of titanium in, in, uh, in the mail. And we've been looking at the heat treat. I thought about getting my own oven. They're about like $1,100 or so and uh, it's a lot of money. Or the other option is to send it out. I'm in Canada, so there's only a few places that kind of specialize in knives that I could find. One's in Alberta, very far away. And I just don't have enough time to send my blades out there and get them done and stuff. Um, but then I recently heard of a place in Mississauga, which is near Toronto, that uh, they're like a huge industrial heat treating place and they, um, they do knife stuff on the side, I guess. And apparently all the knife makers in Ontario go there, so. I'm very happy with that. The prices are extremely reasonable, especially in larger quantities. And um, uh, hopefully they will let us do a shop tour uh, in the next few weeks. So that'll be cool. That'll be part of a knife making video. And same for the water jet place. We'll, uh, we'll shoot some video there. They said we could. So what else? Um, this thing's freaking awesome. I've been dying to machine something, so this is something we did last night. It's kind of a useless widget digger, but <laughs> <laughs> uh, I did a video um, I'll be posting soon enough of how we machine this, but it's steel, three quarters of an inch deep, tons of material, like three times um, lighter is how much we removed, and it, it machines awesome. Basically, the past few weeks I've been spending a lot of time on the computer in SolidWorks uh, designing these big fixtures. It's complicated. I mean, I never went to school for this stuff, so I'm learning as I go. And fixturing is a really, can be quite complicated if you want to do it, you know, to an extreme. Um, but I think I've got it down pat. And in the next few weeks, I'll show you, you know, how I did it. And uh, in the next probably 
we're waiting for some alignment pins to come in. That'll help make the fixtures. You can take them off and put them back on repeatedly. Um, once we get those, then we can drill and tap and put all the cool stuff in the fixtures. And that'll be the next two, two three days, hopefully. And then we can start making stuff. Hooray! Yay! Uh, water jets should, should be back um, at the end of the week, hopefully. And we got to drop off all that titanium that we got to them to make handles. I'm going to make paramilitary handles in titanium. Hooray. And uh, yeah, it's crunch time. We got four weeks till blade. <sighs> yeah. Lots of work to do. But if you're going to be at blade, we're going to be at table 20E. So please come by, stay, say hi, hang out. Fondle our knives? Yeah. Not much knife making going on in this video, I gotta say, but it's it's all setup work for this beautiful beast behind me. Um, cool little factoid about the machine is, we were reading the manual, um, it says the maximum table weight capacity is 500 pounds, and we're like, that's that's like three of us standing on the table, and it can still move it without stalling, and completely different than my old machine. Um, which is now parked right over there in the corner. Probably never to be used again by us. And uh, I mean, after playing with this thing, I'll never go back. <laughs> Guess that should be it. Pillow fight. <laughs> Thanks for watching. <laughs> While Eric's sharpening my knife in the corner, uh, I remembered something that I wanted to, to talk about. Um, I forget exactly what week it was, but one of the knife making weeks, I made all these, because uh, I believe Eric made most of these, um, titanium spacers and standoffs and thumb studs and all kinds of neat things. That's a t blue titanium uh, thumb stud there. Anyway, I do have a CNC lathe. Um, however, this is kind of a complicated part to make on this kind of CNC lathe because it doesn't have a tool changer. And ideally it has to be threaded while it's on the machine. Um, or tapped, I should say. So I've been trying to figure out how to make all these spacers and thumb studs that I need for the run of Norseman. And I got a few quotes from various machine shops. Most of them never got back to me, but the ones that did, uh, the quote was okay, kind of high, but it was a minimum order of 200 pieces each. Um, so 200 thumb studs and 200 uh, standoffs or spacers. And that really adds up to a lot of money. Um, and it's not something I want to make on my CNC lathe because of aforementioned problems. But it occurred to me that I read something a few years ago about how you can turn a milling machine into a lathe, sort of. And that will make for a really cool video. So I'm going to make a um, tooling fixture like insert picture here. This guy made a really cool fixture to mount a whole bunch of tools this fixture lets you drop in a bunch of these, like I've got three here for example. This is a center drill, or in this instance it would be a center drill. Reamer, drill bit, and you can do all kinds of stuff. As well as have your turning tools on the side. Um, so I could make those entire um, thumb studs in one operation using, uh, I don't know if it's like four tools or maybe even five tools, in one operation on the milling machine, which will be awesome. So I just dropped off my order today at the metal store to get that bar of steel. And then I'll machine it this week. And I gotta buy some uh, small grooving tools um, for lathe work. But they're going on the milling machine. So that I can make these uh, thumb studs and spacers. And probably by next week I will have video of that. So um, that'll be fun to watch.